Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello class, Professor Sunrise here. Regional season is finally starting and I'm back on the Yu-Gi-Oh! grind. The last few weeks and like month and a half, I wasn't really playing Yu-Gi-Oh! as some of you have already noticed. Um, but now with the regional I Amina mean, performing as I would have liked to, I'm definitely very, very hyped at how it went. I was at Sunday, I was at Dreieich in Germany here. We had like 340-ish people or something like that, 360 maybe. I went 5 to 1, got 44th place, 41th, 41st, I think 30, 41st place. Overall, the deck performed quite well, especially with how bad I prepared for the meta. It was just my misplays against Chimera, which lost me a game because I was very hungry and very tired. And I got a draw because I just misplayed uh, because I wasn't really that comfortable in the matchup to begin with because I very little, I played very little in the last few weeks. So if that makes sense. But now being super hyped because I haven't performed as well as I would have liked to. I'm really on the DB grind again and will be testing, testing, testing to top YCS Dortmund again. But in this video, we'll be taking a look at the list which I used at the tournament, but we'll only go over that quickly and focus more on the things which I want to change to combat the new meta. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the deck profile, but more importantly, we will have a discussion about Dragonlink in the upcoming format, what tech choices I think are really good right now, and more importantly, what engine uh, slots we have in the form of Brennan Beast, Banner Regain, Ball Drake, stuff like that, Black Metal, if you want to play those or if we don't want to play those. So without further ado, don't forget to seal pass on the subscribe button, leave some feedback down in the comment section below and let's get right into the video. So let's not waste too much time for the actual profile, but before we get into it, shout outs to my girlfriend for this amazing Daddy Colossus bag, I guess. Um, for my playmat, it's fucking amazing. So shout outs to my girlfriend in the comment section below. Daddy Colossus will always be with us. So let's get into the profile. Bustio package, pretty standard. I don't think if you if you play less than two Serenia, that's just bad. I guess you could play two, but I think I just the consistency of getting to the Lebellion is too important. Only one Druze from in the main. Haven't really missed Baldrake whatsoever in the main deck, and then regained and branded beast. Let me tell you. My assumption was that a lot of people were on Drill in the main deck, or at least in the side deck, but I think I only got Drilled maybe once, if at all. And so Branded Beasts have never really came up for me because it was only my assurance against Drill. And with less Drill being the format, I might cut this card out of the main deck. I know it's crazy, I was always a huge fan of the Branded Beast, but it just doesn't seem really, really feasible, but more on that in the theory part and the discussion part later on. Uh, but for now, it was the Bestial package, of course, it was insane. Um, Stardust, Chaos Base, Safer, the Wyvern Burst, the Levy, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the Quick Launch Package, the three Tracers, one Caliber, one Recharger, Abs, and then the Boot Sector and Dragon Ravine. No Black Metal whatsoever, I just think Black Metal is not really good right now with so many books running around going second, it's just a liability. Going second, a Tracer is also just as good because it basically puts two, normal sum uh, two bodies on the board as well because of Striker Dragon and Boot Sector Launch. Um, so going second is just as good and going first, it's not really needed to have that additional consistency because especially now with Nip being super popular, we don't really want to go for big combos. Uh, so I think uh, like a combination of like Seal, Savage with the Regain and then more emphasis on non-engine is going to be the approach. And for that, Black Metal is just not needed. With Nip being super popular, you could argue to play one Black Metal, one Red MD. I did test that before the event. It was just a very little testing I had the uh, ability to do. And it was okay-ish. It never really came up because it didn't get nip. But with Unchained being super popular, the best card against that is probably nip. So maybe nip will be in a lot of side decks. And we might want to prepare for that. But for now, I don't think black metal is all too needed. For the non-engine, that was insane. Three Book of Moon. Shout out to Santiago for telling me to play Ashes over Droll. Ashes was were insane. Especially with Camara being around three Imperm. Just consistent as fuck. And then last slot, one Talons. This 10 uh, non-engine slots in 42 cards, so that's pretty solid, and I, which is where I want to be at. Overall, these were insane. These could be Book of Eclipse, uh, because books are just really good right now, especially against Purely. Um, but for this, the main deck is just perfect, in my opinion, apart from the um, Branded Beast and maybe the Book of Moons you could change out. So the extra deck is where, and the side deck especially, is where a lot of the tinkering has to be done. Of course, we have the Striker, Romulus, 2 Seal, with more nips running around, I think two seal is really good. You could even argue to play like a Mascarena package, but the space is just really tight. Uh, Pisty, Triple Burst, Borland, MVP of the tournament. 
A lot of times against Purely, you just try to brute force your way into a Borderland and then just sit on that and try uh, and just wait it out because you will just um, at some point draw the out against Purely and it's just easier for you to out it because your whole non-engine slots are dedicated to beating Noir and for them, probably not the whole non-engine is, is trying to beat Borderland, so uh, probably you should win this more than you lose it. And overall, it's just an instant card. Dark. Access code, no unicorn. I missed an OTK. I would have won against Camera if I had the unicorn, so maybe you would want to play it. But um, with Nips being more around, maybe we don't want to play the access code because it's probably not going to come up. I thought maybe like outing random like Rika Concons, random field spells, like random power spells which are on the board while breaking a board could come up. It didn't really come up. And if you OTK with it, most of the time you have ability to OTK differently as well. So I think I might cut this for something else. What I would count it for, I don't know. I don't think Underworld Goddess is really good because if you have four bodies on the board, the Noir is probably going to do something at some point. And Quad Borrow is not really good because there are not a lot of good Link monsters to pop right now, like no Life Twin, no Evil Twin, stuff like that. Um, so for now, I'm not too sure what I will be playing. Mascarena could be good, but for that, we need a Unicorn. And if we do that, we might want to play an Access Code as well. So we have like one to two slots which you want to fit, uh, like which we can take out. And we have like two to three which you want to fit in. So it's really hard to fit everything in for the uh, Synchros, Savage, Scarlet. Really happy that I played this. I went into time a lot. Uh, I didn't use it because like always in like two to three minutes left. But uh, just having the safety net there and always being okay. Um, I have can take my time and just play it out normally because I just have a Scarlet in the back. It was really, really valuable for me. So I would definitely play this one. Uh, this Pater, Baron, Chaos Angel all came up. And then the Atum, of course, uh, also came up uh, quite a bit, so I wouldn't change that. It's just the access code slot and maybe the second seal, but with Nip becoming more popular, you probably still want to play it because the other would be to play um, Mascarena and then have this as a unicorn or like an Azalea once that comes out. But for now, I don't just don't think that's all too crazy. Uh, so I'm... A little lost what to play for that but but we should be able to find something there so now for the side deck let's start with the good part um the three thrusts were insane i uh, really liked them the barrier was really good there are a lot of low impact hand traps running around so thrust makes it so much easier to play against an ash because yeah um ash doesn't really hurt all too crazy apart from if we have chaos space so having just one more like safety net against that is really good while also being like a super good card against basically everything so Thrust becomes in post side against almost everything. You could even argue to main deck it, but um, the more important thing for me is to beat like was or was to beat Droll in the main deck, and Thrust is really good against that post side if we can put in traps to beat it. But we don't really want to play those trap the traps in the main deck, so I just put it in the side and have the generic stuff in the main. Debira is really good. Virus, I thought about kicking it, but then I played against Kashira and it ripped four or five cards. I think four spells out of the hand. And once you play against Lab, you want your thrusters to be alive for a virus as well. When the Rumor Cannon, you could argue to cut this because you can also almost always go for virus as well. But the Rumor Cannon is such a good card and it's also a Noir. So in theory, if you're not 100% sure if you uh, if the purely player is going to make you go first, you can also put in the, uh, the Rumor Cannon, which is really important because sometimes uh, even a second thrust target for a Noir comes out. So um, it might be good to just put in the Rumor Cannon as well. Uh, who knows? Then more thrust targets. Um, Feather Duster. I don't think I ever. I think I searched this once again. Key elements to force out um, a Super Poly. But apart from that, it's just really solid. And then one Herald of the Abyss, of course, to out R or Rise Hard. Now for the um, questionable ones. Three Kurikara. In theory, I still think I stand by this because this is the cleanest out to um, a Rise Hard. So while thrust and books are really good against purely. Um, and they are less good against Kashira because a lot of times they will go for the Forbidden Land. So like 30 to 50% of the time, depending on the prosperity odds, uh, they will have the uh, one answer against the spell answer for the uh, Rise Heart. So I think just having Kurikaras in there is really, really solid uh, to have a guaranteed out against the Rise Heart. While a book would be way better against Purely, I think just having the option to go for this route is in my opinion, very valuable because while Kashira is not nearly as popular as it was like at the German Nats format, I still think you have to respect it and it's probably going to get more popular at like bigger events where people are like really tryharding. So I think Kurikara is still really, really solid, but they could also be Book of Eclipses because they're just really good against um, Purely. And then for the still very good cards, I stand by the Drew's Worm. 
and the side deck just because it's so good, especially now with Unchained being in the format. Bruce Worm becomes way better because not only Abyssia is really good against that matchup, but also having the ability to out their stuff without floating is huge, especially if we have basically no investment next to it. And then one Baldrag. Not too sure about this card. I talked to one of you guys uh, at the event and saying that I should swap Branded Beast and Baldrag out because uh, Baldrag is less bricky than Branded Beast and it's still somewhat like of an engine card and of a utility thing you sometimes want to have. I can see doing that. Not too sure about it yet. Uh, we'll definitely be doing enough testing, especially with Saturday uh, Regional being around the corner. Who knows? And then the worst cards of the side, too evenly. I thought these would be really good against Rescue Ace, Unchained, and Chimera. So all random decks, or like more or less random decks, which I haven't really prepared for yet. But evenly, it's just not really good enough in this deck, especially with Unchained, where Bistials are actually the life. You don't really want to have evenly. It's also not all too crazy. Uh, and those matchups, you don't really need this blowout. Uh, Labyrinth is not super popular at all, and it's even a good matchup. So these cards will definitely be swapped out for something else. Uh, but more on that on the discussion part, which we're actually getting into because this is the whole side tech. So let's take a look at all of the things which I learned at the regional and see how we can adapt to the current format. So now that we got the actual profile out of the way, let's take a look at everything which I learned in the regional and also in the testing up to the regional. So... Let's take a look at the decks to prepare for, the in-engine text, which we can use our own engine to adapt to the meta, and then the non-engine text, so things we really want to play in the upcoming format, things which work, and things which didn't work, like the evenly which I played last regional. So the decks to prepare for are definitely Unchained, it's super hype right now, though I think it will definitely not have that 40 or 30% representation had at uh, YCS Sao Paulo, this will definitely go down, but it's still a very solid mid-range deck, but we are, in my opinion, still the better mid-range deck. Purely, Kashira, of course, these are the decks to beat. Very, very strong. Then Chimera having a shit ton of one-card starters and a shit ton of non-engine slots is always going to be a very solid deck. And then we have more niche matchups like the Mirror, Rescue Ace, Manadium, and Lab. So definitely keep those decks in mind when you're trying to build your deck. What non-engine is currently being played to combat said deck? So, of course, it's Books and Ashes are everywhere. Books mostly are there to hit. Kashira and Pioli, well they do have the applications against Chimera and Unchained going second, going first, they don't really do enough, but this is definitely still good enough to main deck, as it's really good against two out of the top four decks, and it's solid going second against everything, so that's a perfect side tech slot, but also Ashes being generically against everything, but more importantly being one of the few high impact cards you can main deck against Chimera, definitely makes this really really good, against Unchained though it's really uh, not that great, it being a mid-range deck, it can very easily play through a single Ash. So it's basically just a hand loop and board breakers or other cards are just way more impactful against that deck. Nip is getting hyped with Unchained being super, super popular uh, because no one is playing Nip. Nip is the best answer against that. So definitely expect way more Nips in the upcoming future. I will probably play around it a little bit, but not too much because the deck can handle a Nip quite well if built correctly and played correctly. Droll, surprisingly is not really popular, though it's not that surprising because taking a look back at the decks, Unchained, it doesn't really do a lot against that deck and also against Chimera, it does a little bit but it definitely doesn't stop the turn similar to how what it would be doing against Manadium and then against Purely I guess it's pretty solid but against Kashtira it's more often than not, not gonna be enough because once the Kashtira hand has like two to three uh, engine cards, it still just can go for an Arise out no problem, so the pro Droll sadly doesn't do enough there. Maybe we will still see a draw on the side deck, so I still would prepare to some degree against it, but uh, time will tell how much how much draw will be in there. And then overall, the meta is full of low-impact hand traps, books, and then talents like cards with thrust, and talents just being really good against all of those low-impact hand traps. The low-impact hand traps are mostly there because, not because they're really good right now, but because Chimera and Unchain just have so many slots, and with so many slots, just playing hand traps uh, makes sense. Kashira is still mostly on board breaker-ish cards, like these mid rangey cards like Book, Talents, stuff which has applications going first and seconds, but are, is more like a board breaker type card. In engine text, which can use to combat set things, Beast seems kind of bad. Let's take a look at the matchups again against Unchained, it's completely dead. Against Purely, most of the time, because most people are on a three field spell now, you can realistically only hit a normal summon, which you don't play too many of, 
or you can hit the my friend so it's not that but it's definitely not necessary and with seal savage and maybe some non-engine you're definitely good to deal with that deck when they go second against you against kashtira it's of course really really solid but it's not really that crazy but it's solid enough to uh, always go for it in my opinion against camera it's really bad in the mirror uh, regain is better against rescue ace it's decent but it's not needed against vanadium it's decent but it's not needed and against lab it's really good but also a regain is really good to just keep on grinding against them but definitely you want to have it in there to out their back row at some point so with beast being really bad in the main deck it's very feasible to just put it in the side deck and have it there as an option to answer drills, to have it against lab, or to have it against matchups where it's just really solid because having an insurgible way of dealing with back row is really solid in those matchups where you always want to have some back row interactions, for example against uh, Rika, against lab. So it's still definitely side deck worthy, but I don't think it's main deck worthy right now. And Baldrake seems kind of mid. I might completely cut it just because... It doesn't really do enough right now. The applications it has going first are just not there. And I don't think I will be playing this in the future. But I might put it similar to what I said in the deck profile of the video. Put it on the main deck just because Bestials are alive against Unchained. So having it there is not the worst thing ever. Black Metal is not necessary in 40 cards. With so many books right now, I just don't think playing Black Metal is really, really solid. Because going second is just that. And going first, we don't need the utility it offers. Yeah. Having the red MD in the deck is really, really cool. And Black Metal is a solid starter going first, but it's nothing that you need. And I'd rather have the Rocket Tracer uh, going second as a, as a normal summon and then have more non-engines to make going second easier and have a more backbone going first when things, things go south because we get nipped or we get drolled. Maybe in 60 card, it is good because 60 card Dragon Link might actually be the go-to for the next format because 60 card Dragon Link has a way better ratio to engine to non-engine while still keeping the, in my opinion, necessary 90-ish percent chance to see a way into a dragon into the graveyard. So a normal summon, a quick launch, a chaos base, um, a small world, stuff like that to get you going and to unbreak the Noctivisions and the Bestials. It also has lots of options. So in 60 card Dragon Link, we can keep the Branded Beast in the main deck uh, if we get, for example, randomly drolled at some point in our combo, we can go for the Branded Beast or we have uh, the Baldrick in the main deck and it suddenly comes up and we win a game because of that because we just want to play more Bistial. So all of these options are really good in this very toolboxy deck which Dragon Link is and always having all of the options available to you while still keeping um, the necessary consistency you want to have to play and also making the ratios better is really really solid plus you draw even less bricks but the downsides are the lack of bestial access which uh, makes some matchups where the bestials are alive just so easy because bestials are just so good against that matchup think about sprite think about um labyrinth think about tier elements you just lose a little bit of that power in those matchups and you lose harder against draw because you have less good play starters like small world which are just really bad into draw but overall 60 card dragon link is definitely on my radar and we'll be testing it in the upcoming week and maybe even play it in the regional osnabrück again similar to how i did in the last one next we have the non-engines things to consider and in my opinion books are mandatory being good against purely and being good against kashtira uh, the two decks which we cannot beat without non-engine books are just way too clean right now add to that that they are good against basically any end board because they then just act like, like an imperm and it's an auto include but I wouldn't play too many just because they are not good enough going first against Camera and Unchained. Nip is really broken in this deck um, probably the best deck to play Nip not only is this a light hand trap like I said but the seal and Nip interaction is just too insane of just having a seal on board not committing anything into the board and getting guaranteed follow-up of it is just insane not dying and then just uh, breaking the board in the opponent's turn and the next turn is just way too good though i'm not 100 sold on it because kashira players will probably start playing around that and then just having the nip in there for random decks plus unchained is not the greatest deal but depending on how the meta uh, switches up and maybe we can fit it in into the 60 card who knows a rise heart and noir outs are the go-to like i said these are the only cards which we cannot out without non-engine an unchained board and a camera board are actually very easily dealt with if we have like six unique engine cards so we have like two bestials a quick launch a good normal summon um, a chaos space and i don't know another bestial or something like that you can very easily beat that board with those cards but against a riot and noir we just need to see the non-engine out so we definitely want to focus on that while still keeping it somewhat generic so that we have the uh, adaptability to to beat different decks and then both ttt's are insane um 
because the deck is so gassy and has so many pushes and quick launches, normal summons, chaos base, uh, hard draw, wyvern burster, or cold of serpent, abyss deals, it has just so many options to keep continuing to play. The talents draw two is just insane, and thrust getting there is just a very nice consistency boost. So a lot of these matchups, like Unchained and Chimera, I feel very confident in just having thrust into talents as a go to side decking pattern because these cards are just so good and we just want to um, work on the strength of our engine against certain matchups just because the engine is working so well and thrust while being super generic and dealing with the draw weakness and ha having a noir out and also being really good against those uh, wider formats it's just really really solid and I'm a huge fan of the thrust and talents package in the non-engine department. To conclude I will definitely be experimenting with 60 cards and I can highly recommend it to you guys as well. It's super fun though my hands are kind of small so shuffling can be a problem but you probably shouldn't not play a deck because of that. If I don't do that I will probably kick beast out of the main deck, 100% kick beast out of the main deck I should say and then probably put it on the side deck though I'm not 100% sure about that and overall I will just keep trying to be Kashtira and Noir while keeping things generic with the thrust package because it just worked out so well. The whole part of that deck was really, really well. And if it wasn't for the misplays, I would definitely won against those two Chimera matches. Then have just one loss against Kashira because shit happens like that. And that would have been a very, very good result, even with the very little testing I did and the very little preparation I had for the tournament. Overall, I still think Dragonlink is in a very, very good spot right now. It just needs a little tweaking here and there. And maybe you can even up the... Um, the ceiling even higher with playing 60 cards. We, I will be testing that out in the foreseeable future and also on stream. I'm trying to stream more again now that DB is actually looking good for me with a YCS around, around the, right around the corner and actually regionals happening. So definitely check it out in the link in the description below. Without further ado, class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Stanmeister out. Peace.